Hey guys, it is Christian here. Today, we are going to try to laugh at another late night talk show host. This time, we're going to try to laugh at Seth Meyers. Before we end this, please like and subscribe and tell me what did you think of this episode. So yeah. So, in our past few episodes, we've reacted to Conan O'Brien, Samantha B, John Oliver, Trevor Noah, Jimmy Fallon, and we recently reacted to James Corden. And I was very miserable throughout that this video. Um... Here we're actually going to be doing something different. Instead of reacting to clips from their shows, I'm going to react to going to be reacting to Seth Meyers' monologue from the 2018 Golden Globes. And he's got to make me laugh at least one time for me in order for me to win. So yeah, I just have to laugh at least one time. As you guys all know. So yeah, with all that said, let's just get started trying to laugh at this dude. Good evening, ladies right, and go. remaining gentlemen. I don't get it. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm your host yeah. tonight. Welcome to the 75th annual Golden Globes and Happy New Year, Hollywood. <laughs> it's 2018. Marijuana too. is finally allowed and sexual harassment finally isn't. Well, I mean, both shouldn't be allowed because marijuana yeah, smells yeah. like crap and sexual harassment is just very off. It's just terrible. No escalation needed. This was the year of Big Little Lies and Get Out, and also the television series Big Little Lies and the movie Get Out. Don't get it at all. There's a new era and not only does marijuana smoke disgusting, but it's not it's good for you. Years since a Don't white do drugs, man kids. Was this nervous in Hollywood. By the way, a special hello to hosts of other upcoming award shows who are watching me tonight like the first dog they shot into outer space. For the male nominees in the room tonight, this is the first time in three months it won't be terrifying to hear your name read out loud. Did you hear about Willem Dafoe? Oh, God, no. He was nominated. Don't do that. What the Don't hell? do that. These people are just laughing away, but this guy's not funny at all. Considering what has been going on this year with powerful men and their terrible behavior in Hollywood, a lot of people thought it would be more appropriate for a woman to host these awards, and they may be right, but if it's any consolation, I'm a man with absolutely no power in Hollywood. I mean, I'd rather I'm have you hosting than, like, Amy Schumer or Samantha Bee. Oh, yeah, Seth Rogen's there. Yeah. Hey, remember when he was the guy a more famous North Seth. Korea? I mean, you can obviously expect jokes about Donald Trump, right? I think it's pretty much confirmed. Simpler times. They tried to get a woman to host this show. They really did. They said, hey, how would you like to come and be judged by some of the most powerful people in Hollywood? And women were like, hmm, well, where is it? And they said, it's at a hotel. And long story short, I'm your host tonight. And we're all here tonight courtesy of the Hollywood Foreign Press. A string, yeah. Give it up for the Hollywood Foreign Press. A string of three words that could not have been better designed to infuriate our president. Hollywood he's not wrong. Foreign Press. Like he's really not, but that's not a funny joke. The joking. only name that would make him anger would be the Hillary Mexico Salad Association. <laughs> It doesn't even sound good. It doesn't sound as good as Hollywood Foreign Press. Well, I think it's time to address the elephant not in the room. Harvey Weinstein isn't here tonight. Because, well, yeah, because I've heard rumors that monster. he's crazy and difficult to work with. But don't worry, he'll be back in 20 years when he becomes the first person ever booed during the In Memoriam. Yeah, in 20 years he'll probably be dead anyway. So. It'll sound like that. He has a good point there. Well, despite everything that happened this year, not the show funny, goes though. on. For example, I was happy to hear they're going to do another season of House of Cards. Is Christopher Plummer available for that, too? I hope he can do a southern accent, because Kevin Spacey sure couldn't. Kevin Spacey's oh, another Hollywood monster. To Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya is nominated for Best Actor. Ooh. For his work in Get Out. 
No, he was actually good. Yeah, I'll come up for it. I'll come up for it. Daniel plays a young man lured to an event full of aging white people desperate to reclaim their youth, and oh my god, Daniel, it's a trap! Get out! Yeah, it was definitely a trap. Don't Get fall for the dad wanting to vote for Obama for a third time. You can tell if your date was a racist. If you walked out after that movie and your date said, it was so sad when they hit that deer, they're a racist. You went to a movie with a racist. The Shape of Water received the most nominations of any film this year. Just an incredibly beautiful film, but I have to admit, when I first heard about a film where a naive young woman falls in love with a disgusting sea monster, I thought, oh man, not another Woody Allen movie. <laughs> like Manhattan in water. The Post is nominated for Best Picture tonight. The Post. Post is a film about journalistic integrity directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep. No, not yet. We have to wait. We have to wait and see what happens. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're not going to win. Okay, we have, not, we have to wait, but this guy is just not that funny so far. I'll get her back. They just wanted to give him the awards right away. Like, oh, my God, you know? There was some great television nominated this year, too. We had another fantastic season of Stranger Things. Stranger Things season two, which is, in my opinion, the weakest Stranger season. Stranger Things reminded me so much of my childhood. Not the sci-fi stuff, and I didn't really have any friends. But the show's still amazing, Don't know how to ride a bike. Basically just the part where a guy from Radio Shack dated my mom. <laughs> Sesame Street recently released a parody of Stranger Things titled Sharing Things. Meanwhile, Bert and Ernie have been doing a parody of Call Me By Your Name for years. I live really in New York, really so one wrong, of my honestly. favorite shows of the year was The Deuce. If you haven't seen it, The Deuce is a show about Times Square in the early 70s when New York was so seedy, there were two James Francos. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey is receiving the Cecil B. DeMille Award tonight. I think his jokes have, like, the right intention, but the delivery of the jokes are not that good at all, really. A tremendous honor for Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> and Oprah, while I have you, in 2011, I told some jokes about our current president at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Jokes about how he was unqualified really? to be president, and some have said that night convinced him to run. Was Donald Trump so even if relevant that's back true, then? I just want to say... Oprah, you will never be president. Because even though he's been out of office for a year, he's still relevant today. You do not today. have what it takes. And Hanks, where is Hanks? You will never be vice president. You are too mean and unrelatable. Now we just wait and see. I wonder if the unrelatable part is so supposed may, to basically show, mean that these people are just a bunch of virtual Seth elitists. I can't tell with two of my writers, Amber Ruffin and Jenny Hagel, where they tell punchlines that would be more fun coming from them instead of me, a straight white male. Tonight, that's more true than ever. So we thought we could enlist some of the brilliant people in this room. So let's start. Where's Jessica Chastain? Jessica Chastain, everybody. There she is. Give it up for Jessica. Is she even nominated for anything? So I'm going to say the Oh, yeah, she was nominated for Molly's Day. going to say the punchline. Okay, here Wait. we go. The How Golden did Gold I not know that? The Golden 75 this year. But the actress that plays its wife is still only 32. There you go. So much That was not fun. funny. Where's Billy Eichner? I'm here. Right okay, over here. Here you go. Here's your setup, Billy. Call Me By Your Name is nominated for Best Motion Picture. Oh, yeah, I know picture. who that is. It's a gay coming-of-age film. Said Kevin Spacey, you lost me at of age. Billy Eichner's really soon new movie uh, in September, by the way. It looks pretty good. Issa Rae is nominated for her HBO show, Insecure. I've definitely heard of Insecure, but I haven't, but I haven't watched it. Hey. All right, here's your setup. Insecure creator Issa Rae currently has... And this is still me trying to laugh at Seth Meyers, because yeah, right. award... Like, the humor that they have at award shows and the humor they have on their shows are kind of similar. Except they're There's talking no to celebrities show, so in person in instead of interviewing. That didn't even make any sense. Here's the 
is set up according to recent articles. It's basically the same as the show, except it's in Hollywood are played by Asian it, actors. Except it's um, But those numbers might be off since a white person did the math. That's not funny either. The comedy is basically the same as his late night talk show, except except there are a billion celebrities in that room and only two celebrities whenever he's interviewing one. Yeah, but no, I I do the setup and then you do the punchline. Oh, is that how it works? You're, you're explaining something I already know. Is this the mansplaining part of no, no. Oh my God. I just don't think it'll work without uh, your setup to your punchline. Oh, well, I'm glad to know what you think. First of all, thank you for telling me what you think. And secondly. Okay, this guy's not funny. Hollywood, Seth. You know, we've all been through a lot. I don't need a setup to make a punchline work. Okay? You're uh, sadly mistaken. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, uh, uh, another apology. Three more minutes of this. <laughs> all right. Let me just get started. I'm reclaiming my wine. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So you're gonna just do a punchline with no setup. Everybody gets it. You already explained it. Stop explaining it. Oh my god. This is not funny. Hey, I don't know what the hell this is. Setup. Here we go. Said the peach in Call Me By Your Name. This scene is the pits. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy. I also, this. I want to point out that sitting next to Amy is Saru J. Raman. Give it up for Saru, everyone. She's one of many activists from outside of this industry who've been invited here tonight in support of the Time's Up initiative. It's great. Oh, yeah, yeah didn't they invite up. a lot of the activists back in 2018 when this show was happening? It's I ain't got heard something about that. But this movement understands that what tarnished our world this year tarnishes so many others and is reaching out to help them too. And I know if you're watching at home and you see everyone in their tuxedos and gowns, this looks like a room of privileged Hollywood elite. And that's fair. But everyone in this room yeah, kind of our privileged that Hollywood, Hollywood is so much more than that. When you're on a film set, you meet hairdressers and camera people and script supervisors. Most of the jobs on film sets are jobs for people who work long, hard hours. They are American dream jobs. Those people aren't there. Those people aren't there thanks to their rich dad, except for that one PA. Every film set has at least one super connected PA who is always late. And you ask what the hell his deal is, someone's like, oh, that's Jeremy Paramount. <laughs> Give Jeremy his space. Is this, is this almost People over? in this room worked yeah, really is. hard to get it here. Is. But it's clearer now than ever before that the women had to work even harder. So thank you for all the amazing work that you've all done and you continue to do. I look forward to you leading us into whatever comes next. So thank you so much for letting me say that. Okay, guys, that is it for me trying to laugh at Seth Meyers, and he didn't get any laughs out of me. This is the sixth time I've lost this entire game. I laughed at Conan O'Brien, and but I haven't laughed at a single other comedian. And not to mention, our last two hosts are going to be Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert. I'm going to reveal which one I'm going to be reacting to next. Next, um, but yeah, he didn't, he didn't make me laugh at all. Like, um, he tried to, but it didn't really work out. So, where would he be in the ranking so far of the hosts? I mean, there's Con Conan's still number one. I guess I do John Oliver next, even though he's not really that good either. And then, um, and then the... And then, yeah, th that'd probably be Seth Meyers, and then it'd be Trevor, and then, and then it'd be Trevor Noah, and then it'd be Jimmy Fallon, and then James Corden, and then our, and then last place is still Samantha B. So yeah, that is me trying to laugh at Seth Meyers. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.